Hello, my name is Nick Ridgepole. I'm the business development executive at the Belfast Met, and I help businesses secure funding for their innovation journeys. We also have Darren Hawhey, who is the product design lecturer with the Belfast Met College, and who has delivered numerous upskilling sessions to local businesses. We also have our guest today, Joe Mujume. He is the sales director for Evercam Construction, and Joe will be discussing the innovative new technology within the construction industry and how that could be best used to support site management. And with, without further ado, I'll hand you over to Darren Hawhey, who will... Hello, yeah, Hello. I, Hello. Will, yeah. I, I will hand you over to Darren Hawhey, who will further uh, discuss right. the presentation. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Nick. Hello, everybody. So straight in, um, looking at the current market state, um, it's, it's of no surprise really to anyone that um, the market's quite volatile at the minute uh, with Brexit and COVID, and you don't need me to tell you really, but just just to sort of draw down some some uh, uh, statistics on that really, um, the, the level of construction output, as you can see here from 2010 right through to 2021, the massive dip, we're sort of still recovering from that really as such. Uh, so there, there wasn't really any construction happening. Um, and, and why that's important is, well, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of see later on in the, in the presentation, but uh, in terms of material costs, uh, sort of off the back of Brexit and certainly COVID as well, 67% um, of businesses reported an increase in construction materials, goods or services compared to normal fluctuations. And this is the highest of any sector, as you can see there, uh, with the graph on the right. So the really the incentive to increase efficiencies has never really been as high, um, given that the margins are significantly lower because of initial material costs and service costs. It, it, it certainly uh, lights the fire under a lot of businesses to increase internal efficiencies. Um, so looking at the construction legacy, where the main issues would have lay, lead times, you know, um, I think we've all sort of find ourselves waiting on a, a contractor or a plumber or whatever the case may be, not to, not to cast too much shade at, at some of the industries, but um, it, when you're dealing with more industrial sites, you know, lead times, it sort of snowballs really, if, if, if you're waiting, for example, on a crane that hasn't arrived, or, um, you know, it means other guys maybe need that crane to operate. You know, it, it, it sort of snowballs, it flows downstream. So the, the cost is going to go up exponentially if, if something's off there. Um, in terms of communication, um, it, it just takes really, you know, maybe the sparkies not to talk to the plasters or the plumbers. And then, you know, they're, they're maybe in trying to work on the same area of a, of a build on the same day. So even practical things like that where two people can't be in the one place at the same time. Um, can cause issues and historically has. Um, the, the, the current market status as well obviously has a, a good burn on that. So um, risk mitigation as well. Um, so more specifically, um, I suppose <sighs> Joseph will sort of talk through this a bit better later on, but uh, you know, it's a dangerous work environment in construction. So the, the opportunity for people to hurt themselves for health and safety issues to arise is significantly higher than most other trades or most other jobs. Um, and then obviously the knock on effect of this is basically cost. Um, so the, the more you can see of really the better for the business. And um, one of the main things that um, people use currently and is fast becoming uh, the, the industry standard as such is BIM. So BIM helps people their businesses plan their bills. It helps full transparency in that, you know, uh, I sort of talked a little bit about there, you know, a plumber isn't trying to put in pipes where maybe a door is going or the joiner knows what kind of door to use, what kind of door to, you know, what kind of frame it's getting, uh, if it's to be fire safe. All, all this data is live so that if sort of someone top line on the design team changes something, everyone from the, the sparks right through to the plumbers, uh, full transparency and full live data is, is driven into the project essentially. Um, the, let me see, 
it's sort of a contain with MRP systems and ERP systems and anyone obviously anyone in the industry would know what they are. Um, uh, so in a nutshell, BIM really strives for a harmonious relationship between all the different stakeholders within a project. And th this sort of this will come into play during Joseph's presentation. Um, so uh, the main agenda really here is to explore existing technologies and integration methods with enhanced technologies and services. So AI, just to touch on it a little bit, sort of, you know, a lot of people don't really realize that we're in the future, I suppose. Um, but AI is in everything, you know, with self-driving cars, we have recognition systems for, you know, faces, expressions, vehicles, this kind of thing. And all these are, are sort of utilized in, um, certainly in Evercam anyway, the, the recognition systems. So over to you, Joe. Uh, thank you, Darren. Good day, everyone. Those on the east and the west coast and down in South Africa, my name is Joseph. Um, it would be a pleasure for me to show an example of Evercam as a business that is helping to improve construction productivity. But I'll just go back and start from the beginning. The real reason why Evercam was created eight years ago was on the policy that if we all see the same thing, if we all communicate off the same sheet, then we can build the biggest pyramids in the world. And as you know, construction has to do with many parties, so many stakeholders, thanks to COVID, remote stakeholders, all talking about one project in the middle of nowhere. And eight years ago, the guys who started Evercam said, there might be an interesting suggestion here if we point an IP camera on a job site and it's capturing every single thing. So a bit of start. Evercam is a hundred man company spread over 11 countries in the world. And we've got cameras on every continent apart from Southern America. If you start to watch all our construction videos today, it will take you 625 years to finish watching them all because we have over 10 billion images of activities that go on on different construction sites around the world. How does this link to today's conversation? Everything we're going to be showing you is off the basis of data that is 10 billion that's about 10 billion images from different construction sites. And we feed that into a supercomputer to be able to interpret what is happening, what has happened in the past, and what is the likelihood of something happening in the future, which is what we call the predictive analysis of our data, which says if a hundred million times previously, a construction truck has tipped over where it had content in it, then there's a chance it would happen again because our camera recognizes the trend in the way that construction truck is coming into the site. So that's the real simple example that we can show you about predictive analysis. But to excite you, let me paint a picture or let me share a video by sharing my screen. So just a second. You are about to see the power of cameras that are smart. So the video you're watching is a construction site. Apologies for the absence of audio. What you're looking at is a camera that is capturing trucks going in and out of the site, registering the time, the date, the content fill, uh, registering how many trucks came in, how many trucks came out, and spitting all that into construction data that is used by the folks in the site to improve productivity, to record against invoices that are going to be paid, to be sure that everything that is done on site is compliant, and most importantly, that the record is kept of what has happened. So this is what we do in Evercam. We point a camera over a job site, we use intelligent systems to review what has happened in the site, and we make interpretations. What you're looking at now is the job site somewhere in Ireland, and we're all sitting all over the world. As you can see on my top right, it is a live view camera. The date and timestamp is real. So the first thing we're doing in construction is giving remote live view visibility to as many people as possible. And like in the example you've seen, if everyone is looking at the same thing, the chances of errors are very, very slim. But then this site has got loads of trucks going in and out. At the bottom right of my screen is an imaginary line that shows the ins and out of the site. Now my camera is able to see every single vehicle that goes in and out. Today, 
truck counting, vehicular counting is human based. There's a man at the gate who is counting the trucks going in and out. But that in itself has potential for errors. He could be on his copy break, he could not be paying attention, he could miss some a count or a number, or the, or the paperwork could be falsified. So we've been coming to the construction site saying, let's take away that independence on the man and let's put it on computers and let's allow the camera to do the analysis for you. Hence, we've created an example of that is this item here at the top called the gate report. The gate report is a camera that is intelligent that can pick out all those kinds of vehicles that are going in and out. So let me lay the case here. On this construction site, the quantity surveyor has received an invoice from a supplier for an, an operation that happened on the 8th of February this year. And that operation says, you need to pay me for the number of trucks that took out the waste from the site. It's 8th of February, QS cannot go back in time. He cannot time travel to see what has happened. With gate report, the QS can come back in time to February the 8th. And my camera is now able to pull out a report of every vehicle that went in and left the site. The report can tell you if the load was full, if the load was empty, the kind of truck that came in and how long the truck stayed on site. This is the power of AI. And one of the things that you use this for is you could easily pull up a report, which I'm just downloading now. And that can be used to verify every single invoice that was submitted on that day for this operation. And this is what it looks like. The other use of a report like this is someone who is a process improvement manager for a construction company looking for the small marginal improvements that he or she can make on the job site. In this example, as you can see, all the vehicles that came in and out are all tipping trucks. However, the first truck stayed on the site for only 10 minutes, but the fourth truck doing the same operation stayed three times the time of the first truck. These are indications that pro process improvement managers might be able to say, hold on a second. How is the same truck staying three times longer, costing me much money on the job site? How can I improve by making this an average of 12 minutes? And this kind of reports are then used to have conversations with the site managers, with the QS team to say, we would like to improve the margins of our operation by making sure the trucks don't stay longer than 10 or 12 minutes. That's one example. But if we come back to the camera and let's say now we're saying, well, did this truck really come in or out? I'd like to see evidence. Many times cost overruns on a project is based on evidences that have happened in the past. Not only can Evercam produce reports, we can also provide you video evidence of that truck coming in or leaving the site. So when I click on that, it's gonna take me to that date in history, take me to the hour in question, and with every yellow spot you see, it is a video evidence of the truck leaving. So allow me click play. If you keep your eyes on the camera, you would see the truck just left. If I go back a bit again, that's the truck. That's the truck being loaded. Remember we said we have an imaginary line where the count will start, and now the truck has gone, we're able to register that. This does not require any human interference. This does not require me to be on the site, and the site could be anywhere. So that's an example of the power of artificial intelligence. Our cameras, as I said, have been fed with 10 billion images, so we can identify a pickup truck, we can identify a loading truck, either empty or full. And so this is the way we've helped construction projects save money, be more productive on the job site. Darren had made mention about the power of BIM. In our books, BIM is the Bible of construction. In the future, every job site needs to be built, designed using live BIM. It is like the CRM of every company. It's like your teller machine in every bank. It is like the ATM machine in any bank, as I said. In future, the ability to use live beam, whereby the engineer is making a change in Belfast and the construction team in London are able to see that change immediately. That's the synergy that construction is going into the future. And I'd like to show you an example of how Evercam is playing a role in that. I will take you to a different job site. This job site is in Aberdeen. Again, we are all over the world. Again, it is live view. Because this job site is camera integrated with beam, there are a few interesting things we can do. For example, if I were the engineer sitting in Dublin and I want to make a quick measurement on a concrete slab, this job is in Aberdeen, but watch me rule a line over the site and I can make measurements that are accurate to 
This means from the comfort of my house while working remotely, I can take measurements, I can make engineering judgments. Again, it's the power of BIM and it's the power of AI in construction. The next thing I could do is, as we said, communication is key. I can now sit in my house and I can mark up on a live job site camera, the area of construction work where I'd like to pour concrete tomorrow morning. I can also, from the comfort of my house, instruct the delivery truck with the concrete on how to enter and exit the site. Again, on a live image that is shared with a million and one other people. Using the power of live image beam model to be able to communicate on the site. And this makes errors very, very minimal. Let's take an example. Darren is the chief construction manager and he wants to highlight the next part of the construction site where he wants the job to proceed. Darren can take a color mark, he can easily mark it all up, and he can easily communicate this with the subcontractor to say, tomorrow, this is where I want you to work on. So let's go into BIM. With our cameras, we are now able to say, what should the job look like when it is done? That's what you see on the left-hand side, the mocked up BIM model that is being edited and changed day by day. And to the left is the live image of what the site is. Now you are able to compare as design on the left versus as built on the right. The power of this is a concept called clash analysis or variance analysis. With this facility, you are able to spot a change from design. Is the pillar in the right place? Is it a bit taller? So you're able to spot errors quickly make amendments and save cost on the job. How do we do this? What you're looking at is the final BIM model if the job was done. But if we go back a bit time-wise and say, where should this job be on the 24th 7, you see all the beams and pillars. And then I can go to my camera and say, I'd like to go back and check on that same date. Say we're looking at July the 15th at 11 a.m. Now I'm about to compare two times in the past to say, is the job aligned with the plan? A fantastic tool that every QS, every project manager is now using to track the progress on site. And this is why Evercam is cutting edge. This is why we are different because now we can play around with between reality and as built. Okay, without wanting to bore you, that is just an example of where we think construction is going. The big question I guess anyone would want to ask is what is the future? And let me play the scenario for the future. We all know there's shortage of heavy duty drivers in the UK. Guess what? It's not only heavy duty drivers on roads, also heavy duty equipment drivers on site. We are finding that the lack of people are willing to drive the dump trucks, big trucks. That's why the likes of Volvo, Mercedes, Tata, CAT are all building autonomous construction vehicles vehicles that will go on the job site and work independently of themselves. The big question is the degree of safety of such vehicles will depend on having eyes that are seen and looking at the site all over. So we believe that in the next five to 10 years, autonomous driving will come on the job site and the success of those autonomous vehicles will be completely based on the power of AI to support visuals on the job site. So that's just one example for a curious mind as to what we think the future is. The other part is drones. What I've shown you is an example of a fixed position camera, a camera that doesn't move, that simply looks at the job site. But there is a role for drone cameras that can fly and capture a bit more details. We do that today when drones go over farmlands, over sites like this. The problem is, the images captured by the drone is only as good as the last minute it flew over the job site. The future is to have high powered drones that will sit over the job site constantly and be able to capture and interpret images. We are started playing with that in Evercam and I will just show you a snippet of what we think the future is. What you're about to see is a drone shot of the entire project overlaid on Google Maps and Live View. Now, this is still a work in progress, but in future, we should be able to rotate the site, be able to track the beam model versus what is happening on the job site. Again, the purpose is for transparency to build assumption scenarios 
run predictive analysis and be able to advise the construction side to say, if you cut down the number of working hours or you increase the number of men by 30%, this is what you will get over your job site. Without much ado, I'm going to stop presenting and hand back to Darren and Nick for any questions. Thank you, guys. Lovely. Thank you, Joseph. Any questions in there, Nick? You're muted. No questions um, in the chat. I have a question, Joe. You mentioned um, you guys are across the globe. Um, where are some of the, where can we find some of your sites? Ah, uh, okay, that's a that's a good question. So I'm going to go back again and share what we look like as a global company. So as I said, we're a hundred people in our team. We've got cameras up in Canada. We've got loads of cameras around the U.S. Uh, we started off in Ireland, so a good number of our project cameras are all around the island of Ireland, and we are also really strong in the UK side, expanding up to Scotland. We've got a camera, a few cameras in Europe. We've got one in Barcelona. Our first camera in Africa is up on an offshore rig in the middle of nowhere. We've got cameras in Malaysia, and we've got a few cameras down in Australia. So the good part about this is we are capturing images from different parts of the world because construction also varies. Okay, okay. And you mentioned you have an offshore rig as well. I know that yes. offshore is playing quite a quite a big role now in yes. the pivot. Um, so what's the future for Evercam then? Are you guys gonna go into offshore? No. Um, no. I think the future trajectory of our business is based on certain facts. People wanna see the truth of what is going on anywhere construction is happening. You wanna sit in the comfort of your house and have a view. So we think the first milestone is there would be a construction camera, project camera on every construction site on the surface of the earth. The second milestone is, it's not only seeing what is happening today, it's predicting what might happen next on your job site. And we think that that's where AI will really play a role in taking today's reality, comparing it with previous scenarios and running analytics of what might happen next. For example, if there was a storm in Nevada six years ago that affected the construction site for the next three weeks, and there is now predictive data that another storm is coming, analysis can help us say, this is the impact of that job, of the storm on the job, and these are the things that a construction company might need to do to mitigate or minimize the impact of that storm. So it's taking external data, adding it to internal data that we have from construction site, predicting what might happen next and provide advisory services to construction companies on how to avert, minimize, or counter the effect of such, such external factors. So there are many routes to go. We just think that the first step would be every construction site in the world, be it building an offshore rig or building your house or building the next university where capacity is changing. Everyone wants to see what is going on on the site. Okay. And did you did you talk about um, the uh, the ability of your camera to sort of capture data in regards to weather patterns, for example, or uh, when? Absolutely. When, so yeah. so I had given the example. It's good for me to go back and show how it works. Yes. So please. as we said, the biggest influence on a construction site is not only internal factors. Sometimes these are external factors. This is a storm that is about to come. This is rain. This is snow and it could put your operation in a complete stop. What we have done with that knowledge is now we are able to integrate weather data over the job site. So what you're looking at live now is the weather forecast, hourly weather forecast over this job site in Dublin. We can tell the wind directions in the next one hour, the chances of rain and the chances of wind speed. In a practical sense, imagine a heavy duty lifting operation has been scheduled for 3 p.m. today, and it's supposed to run for two hours. With this data, the project team can be able to now tell what might happen if wind direction changes, if wind spin changes, that might be a health concern or an operational failure on the job site. So this data enables the project team to make on-time prompt decisions that could save life, money, and time. Now, not only are you able to see this in live view, 
you could actually go to the past. So in this example, let's say I have a subcontractor who said to me, Joe, we couldn't pour the concrete because the weather was bad on the 25th of July at 9 a.m. I can go to my calendar to July the 25th at 9 a.m. I can pull up the weather for that day, as you can see, and I can challenge the narrative that he has given to me. Mm -hmm. So not only can we see weather for what is coming ahead, we can also see weather in the past to say, on a day when the wind speed was high, this was the weather condition and this is possibly what could happen. All that data is what we use to help construction companies make the right decision for their job. Very good. And you mentioned as well uh, the autonomous vehicles and deliveries coming to and from the construction sites. Do you have any examples of, of of where uh, companies have saved money by using Evercam in the delivery process? So the current examples we have with, is, has always been the challenge around invoices. So the way construction works is your supplier would bill you 90 or 60 or 45 days after the operation has happened. So we did have a client who got a bill to say, 30 steel doors were delivered on site 60 days ago. Here, this is the proof of delivery. It was signed for at the gate, pay me for them. But the site team is saying, but we didn't see the doors. We never took delivery of them. The address was right. We don't know who signed this. The whole human error was involved. And each door, I think, cost about 650 pounds. So we're talking 20 grand plus on that loss. Because they had ever come, they were able to go back in time look at the gate report, pull the report, and the video showed that the delivery was done across the road on another job site, which was just across the road. And that alone saved them thousands of pounds for a system that charges them just 350 pounds a month. So the return on investment was more than justified for that one incident only. And that's a, that's a very good point. Um, uh, you know, in terms of 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 applications or events that occur that that you might not think of as standard, that that was sort of outside the box. Um, we have a question here from uh, Connor McCuey. Um, do do the uh, cameras take into um, into account traffic conditions? Yeah, and well, so it does. Is there an example that you can? Okay, so in a different example, you would have your cameras overlooking the adjoining property, the the road networks, the around the site. This is particular for sites in the city center. So let's see if I can find you one. Uh, it's one second. Ah, I know one, sorry. So those who are in Ireland will know the BAM Children's Hospital, NCH, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is a camera where a logistics guy in NCH always likes to use because this is the entry into the job site. And he always needs to ring the supplier who is coming to say, yes, the door is open, we have a delivery bay. He would like to always see this road to see what is going on on the road real time to enable him plan his deliveries and his exits. So he can zoom in and drag it to the side and say the road is clear, the truck can come, the truck shouldn't come, give me another hour. Mm -hmm. So yes, some companies would advise us that we wanna see the site, but we also wanna see the adjoining access way into the site to enable us make logistics decisions. Okay, very good. Thank you. David Irwin has a question around GDPR. Yes. Are you obliged to advise all persons entering the site that they, are, they and their vehicles are being recorded by a fixed camera? Yes, we are. It is our obligation to put up a sign at the entrance and exit of all the sites to say, this site is being captured under the GDPR conditions. Accessing the site with this knowledge is assumed as permission for us to record. Nonetheless, 
what you can see is we are not so detailed to identify that this is Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. An example, these two gentlemen here, you cannot tell if this is Nick and I having a cup of coffee. Post-production, we are obliged to anonymize these faces that you cannot tell the distinguished future of each of them. So we're fully GDPR compliant in that regard. Very good. And we have a question from Kevin, but before we get to that, I have two questions on the back of that. Yeah. Joe, do you anticipate a move for Evercam to move away from uh, fixed cameras at all? We, we understand that the perfect future is a combination of fixed position cameras and mobile cameras. And mobile cameras include drones. Mobile camera include a company called Open Spaces or Build Dots. These two companies have said, we will install cameras on the hard hat and anyone who walks in the site with the hard hat would capture the interior because we are only half of the cake. Today, I cannot tell you what is going in, on in each of the rooms in this hospital, but the guys with mobile cameras can do that because anyone who wears the helmet with a camera can walk in and capture everything going on in the room. However, the problem with that, it is, it is dependent on the carrier. There must be someone walking the site every single day to capture it. So if you think about it, Nick, if you have a helmet on with a camera, if you walked a room on Monday, but you only walked that room on Thursday, everything that happened between Monday and Thursday, you've missed it. And mm -hmm. I think this is where the future is. The future is miniature sized drones that are programmed to independently fly the interiors of the job site and do all the capturing without any human interference. I think that that's the future perfect match to go with a fixed position camera from the exterior. Very good. Thank you for that, Joe. I think I had a second question, but I, it's totally gone out of my head now. So <laughs> we'll, we'll move on to uh, Kevin Lavery. Kevin is a lecturer at the Belfast Met and a former quantity surveyor. So he's he's quite impressed with what he's seeing here. And he has a question uh, for an industry notorious for contractual disputes where historical evidence is critical. <laughs> Yeah. Do you see this facility as reducing those? Yes. The thing is this, Kevin, there are two points. When everyone knows that there is independent eyes overlooking the website, the, the, the site, everyone tends to behave appropriately. Secondly, we have had cases where there has been claims and disputes, act of God, we were not on site, we were shut down because of COVID. And an arbitrator would always say, provide me a third party independent evidence that you were not on site. On this job, if the site says we were closed on the 5th of January, I can go back to 5th of January in 2020 on the 8th at 9 a.m. and I can play this video for the whole day, zoom in and show that the site was absolutely shut down. So, we know that we do have a role in reducing disputes, claims management on any construction site. If your supplier knows there's a smart camera at the gate, he's not gonna falsify his invoices to you. If he does, it's a simple case to say, look, this is proof. Let me give a use case example on a legal point of view. We had a job site where an adjoining property owner sued the contractor saying the contractor worked over 5 p.m and there was dust and debris coming into her premises, and then she had a medical condition, and her lawyer wrote the construction company for a settlement, saying we'll take you to court and all that. Fortunately, the construction site had cameras like ours, asked the lady for the date, we were able to provide video evidence of the site being shut down at 4 p.m., video evidence that there was no cloud of smoke, and what would have taken a long, drawn out back and forth and financial payment the video was simply sent to the lady's lawyer and the case ended there and then. Does that, does that help, Kevin? That's perfect, Joe. Thank you. Cool. Um, Connor, cool. sorry. Yeah, sorry, so. It... No, for Kevin also, Kevin made a good point about QSs. Mm -hmm. Biggest thing about QSs is comparing what has changed on the job site. What I'm just doing here now is an overlay of one time in history on the job site 
and a different time in history. So I'm comparing August and November, and now I can run over my site and we can see the changes. This is key if you have a subcontractor that is paid based on the contractual time to complete. So if he claims, oh yeah, I completed the decking in six weeks, you can now compare the six weeks period to see, yes, did he do it? Yeah, we've gone three floors higher, pay the gentleman and don't pay him. So just because it was mentioned as a QS for dispute, I wanted to quickly touch on that. That's brilliant. Kevin's comment there is, a, uh, it's great. Um, he'd love to have had this back in the day. <laughs> I know, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, one of the things we'll do is is link you in with Kevin, uh, Joe, because I think perhaps this will be very good to share amongst our students at the Belfast Met as okay. well. Current um, past students, this is what they need to see. Any QS we think that is what is solved, this is the kind of thing he needs to write in his tender document to say we need to have on a job site. And really? it's 350 bucks a month. It's nothing. So, uh, and I... I will come back to that, but before I go, uh, before I, I get back to that point, Joe, uh, Connor had a question about, can this product be integrated with existing CCTV? Good question, Connor. The answer is yes and no. We are not a CCTV providers. CCTV providers look at the periphery of the site for security reasons. So the cameras are pointing at the borderline looking for break-ins and the end result is an armed response. That's not who we are. We are pointing at the general view of the site, trying to capture every detail. So strategically, a CCTV camera will capture one image every five or 10 minutes. We capture eight images per second. That's 28,000 images an hour to be able to run all these analytical features. The only similarities we have with a CCTV company is we both use IP cameras. But what we are pointing at is completely different. A butcher's knife and a kitchen knife are both knives, but what they cut is completely different. So no, we cannot. We are not CCTV providers. We just use the common hardware called IP cameras. However, we are integrated in the standard ERP system that any construction company uses. Be it Coins, be it AutoCAD, be it Beam or Rivet, we are fully integrated in those ERP systems that is used for construction management. So one okay. of the biggest ones will be Procore. You can have all of this sitting inside your Procore software to run all this analysis. Uh, and uh, that's that's great. And on the back of the analysis bit, Joe, Connor asks another great uh, question. Does the processing happen on site? Um, well, and as we both know, like going out to construction sites, uh, you know, traditionally they have poor bandwidth, right? Yeah. So, uh, how do you how do you actually process the information and do your analysis? Excellent. So capturing is based on site. Processing is done in the cloud. So mm -hmm. the hardware setup is the camera captures. There's 10 terabytes of data of storage with the camera. There's a, a router and a SIM card that uploads those images every three to five minutes into the cloud. So bandwidth fluctuation simply means a delay, but nothing is lost. The whole entire process and analytics is cloud-based, not on-site based. Right, okay. Okay, and who has, uh, who has rights over that data then? That data is owned by Evercam? Now that's, a, that's an excellent question that is also commercial. The simple answer is the man who pays the piper dictates the tune. Sure. On some jobs, it is the client who is paying us, so they have the full right of that data, and they only share with the contractor on a need-to-know basis. On some other job sites, the contractors are smart to say, no, let us pay for it, and we own the data. So sometimes we've had project consultants paying, sometimes the client is paying, sometimes the contractor is the one paying. However, they own that data. We, we store the data in the cloud for free for three years, at the end of the three years, we hand it over back to them to do what they like. But the paying customer is the owner of the data. Okay, okay, that's excellent. Um, I had another question that totally slipped out of my head, Joe. Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> the 
<laughs> just, just from a, a practical standpoint, Joseph, um, yeah. you know, the, the, these take, I think it's 439 shots per hour, would that be right in saying? Um, would that be... About 28, 28 grand an hour, yeah. Yeah, so basically that's going to save you some battery, you know, just uh, I'm thinking from a practical standpoint. Yeah. If this was a constant feed camera and it, was, it wasn't it was plugged into the mains, you know, it was maybe yeah. driven by battery or solar panels yeah. or whatever, um, do you find that taking essentially just still images but closer together and not a continuous feed actually saves your battery and you, you know you don't run into occurrences where like you maybe run out of charge or you know puts a camera down as such yeah so the answer to that is pretty simple we it's a mathematical calculation on the start of the install if we're going to use a solar component which is how long how many images per hour, how long is the project for and we put the right battery pack also based on exposure to sunlight wherever it is in the UK or Ireland. However, the, the beautiful thing about IP cameras is that the cameras can communicate back to you. So we can remotely know a camera that is running low on battery or on data, and we can send out a team to either replace or boost it. So that's the answer of, and that's the benefit of using an IP based camera. And and I'm assuming this feed can go through to any device, right? So can it yes. go 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 to my smartphone then? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, for this demo, I could I could I don't know. My, my camera is not on, but yes, it does go on on your device. Yeah. Okay. The okay. other question maybe anyone is asking is there a limit on the number of users? The answer is no. So on this example, I'm showing you now. This is the list of users. I think it's 106. The last time we checked. So it is independent. You can share with every single one on the job. Our policy or our theory is as many eyes are seeing the same thing, the less chances of a confusion happening on the job site. And, and that, uh, that, that leads me to my next question, Joe. So you talked about the cost uh, at 350 pounds. Is that, is that for a single camera? How, how do your packages work then? It, well, the, the truth is we're a software service. And as a software service is monthly recurring revenue is always the model to which we run. Absolutely. So on each camera, it's 350 pounds a month per camera. And it, it doesn't matter how many downloads, how many videos you want, how many users you want on the site. For every camera, it's just 350 pounds a month. And what happens to the cameras after the site then? Who owns that? Is it Evercam? Yeah. No, the paying customer owns that. The customer can choose to relocate it to a new job or the customer can choose to just trash it. As technology changes, cameras also improve. So on a 24-month job, by the end of the job, technology has already overtaken that camera. They're newer, smarter, faster ones. So they are either recycled or disposed. Well, that's fantastic. Um, that's a fantastic product and fantastic company, Joe. I Thank really you. appreciate I really Thank appreciate you. that. Um, Darren, so I'm just going you... to stop sharing, sorry, for yeah. one second, and then just show you the, that's it on my phone, that's the mobile version, as you can see, it's the same job site, uh -huh. so yes, uh -huh. you can also use it on your mobile. Oh, very good, very good, and it's uh, app-based or? Yes, it is just... app-based. Yeah, it is app-based, perfect. Darren, do you have any further questions? Uh, no, I think that's everything for me, Nick. Um, th there's one more question come in at the end, is, is it available in different languages, Joe? Uh, for now, the language challenge is the biggest challenge that we are yet to conquer. We are targeting English-speaking markets, English-speaking countries for now, but part of our growth plan is to find the competence to do all this in other languages that gives us access to other markets. And, and one of the great things that I can say with the product as well is how easy it is to use. Yes. You know, without user interface, like you, even someone who's sort of a bit, bit of a novice with computers. It'd be quite simple to, to operate that. That's the beauty of it. Okay. You know, there, there, there's nothing complex. Everything's been sim you know, simplified and streamlined that anyone can use it, which, Absolutely. you know, I find great about it, so. Thank, thank you, Darren. But it, I think one, the last thing I want to add is the essence of us coming on this call is to drive curiosity as to what is possible in a traditionally licensed industry an industry that is so slow to change, likes to do it the same way, and nobody has the time to listen to you. This is, I think, just the tip of the iceberg. I think in future, autonomous drone service, building by modular, 
uh, all the offsite building, all that is going to come together to make construction fast, safe, and efficient. And there's a role for AI and imagery on that journey. And that, I think, is the key message. Perfect, Joe. Joe, do you want to thank you very much for, for that? And that is a very pertinent message. Um, if you would like to learn more information about Evercam construction, please, Joe, uh, could you tell the audience how they can learn more? And I will. Excellent. Our nature, our nature in Evercam is to do this for free to as many people as possible. If you want to learn, organize a CPD for current students, ex students, well, your QS in your company, simply email support at evercam.io. You'll be great to say you want Joseph to come and do it and nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we will be sure to get someone across to you. So it's support at evercam.io. My email is joseph at evercam.io. And we could share this knowledge with anyone who would like to, to sit in for 20 minutes, Mark. Perfect, Joe. I've, I've dropped both those emails into the chat. Um, thank you very much once again for your time. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Darren. Thank Thanks, you to the audience. Thanks, should, you, should you wish to learn more information about how the Belfast map can help you along your innovation journey, I'm going to drop in the email, which is sedsi at belfastmap.ac.uk, and we will be happy to um, come back to you with further information on both Evercam as well as uh, support through the Belfast Mat. Thank you all very much once again.